The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the October 31st, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we can go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone, dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't dial in, you can send me an email. Send that off to steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Now, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show and happy uh, Halloween. Right now, we got a mixed bag out here. The mix goes like this. The Dow's off 23 points. The S&P's up four. Uh, NASDAQ is off one. Russell's up 10. The semis are up 17. Trendy's up 50. We've got gold trading out at 2,005. That's basically flat. Silver's trading out at 23.25, down 14 pennies. Lights recruit 82.60. That's up 31 cents. Natural gas at 3.54. That's up 19 cents. And a 30-year treasury. Up 18 ticks, trading out at 109.26. Leading the charge, dollar wise, the upside, you've got monolithic power systems, a $25 move or 6%. Replogen Corp, 24 bucks, a 21% move. Arista Networks up 12% or 20 bucks. Top Build Corp up 12 and a half. That's about a 6% move. And Asmill Holdings up 11 bucks, nearly 2%. To the downside, taking in the shorts is Sarepta Therapeutics up 43%, 46 buckaroonies. Hubble. Is down 30 bucks. That's about 11 percent move. Eli Lilly off about two and a half percent or 13 bucks. MSCI down 12 bucks, two and a half percent. Caterpillar a five percent. That's a 12 dollar move. Trade out at 230.01. So we got some movers and we've got some shakers. But let's begin the day by taking a look at those equity future contracts. Let's take a look at the daily and momentarily we'll be over to those white background screens and we'll see in the upper left hand corner the ES mini. What do we have? Yesterday was the completion of a TD9 count. It also turned out to be a bull sash scandal that confirmed a roads meant indicator signal price is going to go tag that oscillator and change line that's currently printed at 4207 the question is will it take it out that's the key out here if it gets taken out well we get up to 4244 4317 and maybe we get all the way up to 4423 out there if we take a look at the nq the nq completed a td9 count top as well yesterday now there's a new profile by the way inside the es mini support at 4146 that first resistance level the center was at 4244 and 4317 was the top the nq Going to go gunning for that oscillator and change line. That's up at the 14,548 level. And if price can get above that, then it should go target the sell zone, 14,838 to 14,938. A close above 14,938 will take us up to 15,309. The Dow yesterday generated a rose momentum indicator bottom. It produced a bull sash candle. And uh, it also is forming a new profile. Now, this new profile is quite narrow compared to the ES and the NQ. That profile is supported 35 sorry 32 754 and resistance is in the zone of 33 214 to 33 444 now this is a new profile that is attempting to form as we speak right now this profile could change it can uh, go away we won't really know until this evening if we take a look but it does have a bottom pattern 
and price is trading above that red oscillator and change line. And if it stays above that, that is a bullish outcome. That's a positive outcome. If we take a look at the Russell 2000, it needs a bullish reversal candle to generate a Roach momentum indicator bottom. It, too, attempting to form a new profile. This would be bullish in structure if this profile were to take hold. With support at 1646, resistance at 16. When I say resistance, I'm really referring to the center of the box. It's the buy zone, which at 1669. So a close above 1669, regardless of whether there's a bottom or not, would take us up to the 1706 level. That's the top of its daily profile. So that's what's going on. We take a look at the four equity future contracts. The key here today, in the case of the Dow, would be a close above its red oscillator and change. And I'd say the same thing for the Russell. In the case of the ES Mini and the NQ, they're going to go gunning for them. If they get up there, you'd like to see a close above those levels. If you see a close above those levels, odds favor a further rally is likely. What else do we want to pay attention to today? Well, I'd say what we want to pay attention to this morning would be the Dow. DAX. Why the DAX? Why the DAX? Because, well, that's not the DAX. How did Stevie do that? Hmm. How did I put that there? That was a mistake. So what we're going to do, though, is put up the DAX here. So DAX, let's get this uh, out here, because the DAX has got that directional correlation with the NASDAQ 100. And so we're looking for some early clues and pointers because of those bottoming signals here. And knowing just how much of a resistance point that daily oscillator and change line is, well, if we take a look at the DAX out here, the DAX has a buy the D point pattern. That was uh, buy the D point pattern was confirmed here along with wave number seven back on October the 23rd. And right now what we have is we have price trade above it's oscillator and change line. For the DAX, that number today at its close, which isn't too far from now, is at the 14,778 level. So if it closes above that, that certainly is giving Stevie the signal that at least the NQ should get up to its red oscillator and change line and perhaps, in fact, close above it. Now, in the case of the DAX out here, it's got resistance at this uh, falling gap out here. We'll say that the resistance point is really down at the 14,984 level. But if price can overcome that, then we'd be looking to move to 15,288. We take a look at the DAX. And the other area that I'm watching inside the DAX. We'd love to see it close above that today is if I look at a 30-minute time frame chart, we can see that its resistance point is up at 14,824.29. In essence, we've this has created a bit of a 30-minute consolidation, sideways consolidation. Now, you know and I know that those consolidation patterns offer us that measured move. So if we take a look at what that would be out here, we get our little drawing tool, draw a little bit of a small rectangle out here. I don't have my cursor on, so I'm just going to kind of ballpark it. But let's just say that that is the uh, consolidation level. If, in fact, we get a move above 14.824, that gets us to the 14.980 level. So, again, a key number for the DAX would be 14.824.29. Of course, that other key number was on that 14.779 level in the daily asset and change line. I'm just looking for a doble gi confirmation of that further move higher. And if we get that inside the DAX, we likely get that same set of signals going on inside the NASDAQ 100 out there. So that's the overview of the uh, market with regard to equity future contracts and so forth. Uh, We've got about 15 minutes before we go to break. Let's go take a quick peek at the U.S. cash indices out here. A number of bottoms that formed yesterday. Roads meant to indicator bottom patterns out there. Right now you can see the Dow here forming that pattern that we just spoke of. Price finding support at its oscillator and change line. That's a bullish outcome. But you got a bottom in the S&P cash, the NDX 100. The Russell's waiting for a bullish reversal candle. The semis have got a TD9 count bottom. So as long as price remains above 31.73, price should make a move to 32.58. You got a bottom in the transports, bottom in the NASDAQ composite and the New York Stock Exchange. A lot of bottoms out there. Bottoms up. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. 
When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Let's get to a couple of requests that have uh, come in. And again, I uh, would love to hear from you as well. 877-927-6648. You can email me, steve at tfnn.com. Just please put a radio show question in that uh, subject line. It makes it easier for me to identify your email from a bunch of junk that I typically get out there. So the first one we're going to take a look at is ticker symbol A-N-E-T, A-Net out here. That is for A-B-C-D or Dan inside the Tiger's Den. And A-Net is... Um, Jeez, just want to make sure I've got the uh, live data. I show printed out about 196.60, 196.47 is actually the last printout here. So, Dan, the number that you need to pay attention to is 198.70. If price can close above 198.70, it's going to negate both a weekly and a monthly Rhodes momentum indicator top. Other than that, you've got a Rhodes momentum indicator top for both of those time frames. And with inside the weekly, you can see that it's a consolidation with inside its profiles. So you know you got resistance up at 198.70. You know you've got support at 168.95. So close above 198.70 on a weekly basis. And boy, you've got probably an A to B equal CD to the upside. I don't see another pattern out here. That uh, yeah, you, you've, you know, it's already got a couple different A to B equals CD patterns that we can take a look at. But 198.70 is going to be your key level. Now today on a daily basis, because of this gigantic gap to the upside, that's confirming a buy the D point pattern. But it's kind of useless for you right now because you know it's way past that entry point out there. Uh, but what price also has is resistance up at 198.62. So you got resistance at 198.62, 198.70 out there. From a daily perspective, you've got volume so far today at. 3.6 million shares going into a daily swing point that had volume of 1.8 million shares 
And actually, the swing point is right back here with 2 million shares. So this suggests that if price closes at least above 194.65, it should get up to test that 198.70 level out there. So that's what you're going to be watching for. And of course, you'd like to see that get taken out. And if it's taken out with more than 2.1 million shares, 2055952 to be exact, that would be a, a very bullish outcome for you. So that's what I see when I take a look at uh, Rista Networks out there. Hope that provided you with the information you're looking for. Steve, can you look at a short term, please? I'm in weekly option, ain't at 30 minutes. Sure, we can absolutely do that. So on the 30 minute basis, the 30 minute chart was the one that gave you the signal of that move to the upside. Didn't say it was going to gap up, but it already put in a uh, bottom when it generated a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. It did that at 10 o'clock yesterday morning. And then throughout the entire day, price stayed above uh, the top of its bullish structure or bearish structured 30 minute profile out there. So as we speak right now, Dan, there is no there's an A to B equals CD pattern, most certainly. So if on a 30 minute base, you're really trying to time that I would be looking at that 30 minute chart, looking for a bearish reversal candle. If one were to form, then that could be an early signal of at least a retracement or a pullback out there. But right now, as we take a look at it, we don't have that. What we have is we've got that resistance area that 198.70. Um, should have asked you yesterday. Well, um, hey, hey, get a, I, I don't. I mean, the, the, I, all I can do is just simply uh, narrate the charts uh, for us. So, uh, it, it, again, this is all. Everything is really pointing towards a move up to that one ninety eight seventy level. Both volume on the daily basis being inside the swing point, resistance levels on the daily and weekly, and on the uh, thirty minute chart, you're above that TD nine count breakdown level as well. And that's up at the 191.12 level. So no top, but a bearish reversal candle most certainly would generate a sell the D point pattern out there. So that was Arista Networks. And let's go to Duncan Steve's request. He would like to take a look at NVIDIA. So let's move over to the NVIDIA charts out there. And NVIDIA right now, um, NVIDIA has... An A to B equals CD to the downside pattern. That's most sure. I think we, maybe we looked at this yesterday, but the B point was uh, October 23rd, 47 million shares. And when it was passed, it was 54 million shares. So let's draw that in here, at least the A to B equals CD point out here. Here's A to B. And I'm just going to move this over. This is approximate, folks. I'm not being perfect right to the T or anything like that. We can do that on my other system. But uh, we don't really need to do that as we speak right now. So the one to one in NVIDIA would get us down to about the 369 is 370 type level. Now we've got a what appears to, we, we, well, I don't know what today's candle is going to look like at 1123. It's a bullish hammer candle, but it's not going to stay static. So I don't know what pattern it is, if anything would uh, form or candle, I should say, would form today. Um, I don't have any. Well, I take this back. So even though this is showing wave number seven. This rally here from that D point out there was so high that it's kind of hard to say that really we shouldn't really just recycle that count. It's more likely in that wave four, that letter D out there versus that wave seven. But we saw how that wave four acted back here, letter D, back on September the 22nd. On a weekly chart, prices are below profile support out there. So close below last week, a secondary close below four week 99, kind of really as um, – adds to the idea of that daily A to B equals CD to the downside, Steve-O. And with regard to the monthly time frame chart for NVIDIA, it's got a TD9 count, Rhodes momentum indicator top, and that really suggests that price should go target that oscillator and change line. That's currently printed at 380. That one-to-one -one A to B equals CD got us down below that level, but that would be a key area of support inside of NVIDIA. So you do have got the potential for a short-term bottom. If we are, have a short-term bottom at least and some type of rally to go along with the markets, what do we see here on a 30-minute time frame chart? Great question. Glad I asked it. When I take a look at that question, what I come up with is, well, I've got a wave number seven bottom here. So that's got a, a possibility. But uh, we're well below profile. We're below its oscillator and change line. So it's got to get above those levels. It's really got to close about 422.56 to suggest that there's some um, something into that rally. Uh, otherwise, that 422.56 is a real key area of resistance out there. So I'd have to say overall, NVIDIA, it's looking like it still wants to head to lower ground out there. But we could get a, a relief rally. This has gone down. Now this will be – no, this will only be the first day to the downside out there. Um, weekly and the uh, monthly are saying lower price. So I'd just be careful out there, Duncan. Hope that provided you with the information you were looking for, Steve NVIDIA. Think the weekly since October 22nd shows a 50-cent retracement. 
Uh, never mind. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know where that 50% is coming off of. It's certainly not coming off of the lows back here from October uh, the 14th out there. So that's one uh, a level. That's where really, that's really what I would be using for a true retracement along that weekly time frame, just to see where it is. But being below profile is really important. Now, I don't know where we'll end the week. If it closes back above that level, if I didn't give you that level, it's 408.99. Then it says that last week's move would have been a false move to the downside. But that monthly chart is the one that's got a, the monthly and the daily because you've got to confirm A to B equals CD to the downside. It's the one that really suggests uh, caution out there. So I hope that that does provide you with the info you were looking for. Nancy wants to take a look at Apple out there. So let's go take a look at Apple. When do they come out with earnings, folks? Somebody in the end should know. Usually it's on a Thursday. I don't know if it's on a Thursday this week or not. But uh, I seem to think they typically do it on Thursday for whatever reason. But in any event, we take a look at Apple. It's got a, a TD9 count bottom. It completed that pattern yesterday. This morning's pullback, you like to see this, it's the bullish signal. Price pulled back and tested and rejected the bottom of that daily profile. That daily profile formed yesterday, 168.10 is that support level. Your resistance out here on this TD9 count bounce is going to be up at 170.96 or thereabouts. That's that daily oscillator and change line. Above that, 171.76 and above that, 174.19. There's one more resistance point. If it can clear 174.19 for 178.42 would be that final straw. If price gets above that, well, we're likely headed to the upside. Apple, how about that? On the Thursday of all days out there. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Thank you, John C. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. TFNN.com. 
Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Folks, we've got the Dow trading down 31 points. S&P is flat. NASDAQ 100 off 37. Russell's up 11. Semis are up 7. Tranny's up 92 bucks. We're taking a look at the chart here for Apple. We were looking at that daily time frame just a, a moment ago. And again, it's got that nice TD9 count bottom. So its real level of support out here is the low of October 26. That low was at 165.67. You close below that. That would be bad news bears. In fact, that would then be confirming that weekly confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside with the one to one getting us, getting us down into the 163 type level out there. On a rally here, which the daily is suggesting a rally, the weekly says where price would find resistance would be between 172.09 and 174.33 and 174.19 happens to be the top of that daily profile out there. So the first thing to do inside of Apple, watch support. The first area of 168.10, and then watch resistance. And that first level being about 171. 170.95 is the current print on that daily oscillator and change line out there. So, Nancy, hope that helped you out with regard to Apple. As far as a short term time frame chart, if we look at a quick 30 minute uh, time frame out here, what do we see? TD9 count bottom. What we see here in Apple, Nancy, is the key level of resistance that price needs to overtake. It's 171.43. That's a TD9 count breakdown resistance level. You close above that. That would certainly add to the idea of Apple continuing with its rally. So I hope that helps you out. Let's go take a look at your next request. That next request was to take a look at Microsoft. And we take a look at Microsoft out here. Microsoft, what do we see? I think we looked at Microsoft and found an A to B equals CD to the upside. So we have a TD9 count pattern that has been negated. The uh, B point of its A to B equals CD had volume of... 25 million. When it was passed, it was gapped up with 55 million. So, yes, inside of Microsoft, there is a confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside. If we take a look at that price projection area, if you give me a moment out here, that would take us to about, again, this is an estimate, it takes us to about the uh, 351 level. Now, price today here, we can see that uh, Microsoft is pulling back. Does that mean anything? No, that's just normal daily movement out there. Uh, the key area here is uh, really 331.39. That's the top of its uh, daily bearish structured profile out there. Price above that is above the screen oscillator and change line. The daily conditions are bullish when we take a look at Microsoft. When we look at the weekly time frame chart where price is struggling is that green oscillator and change line. And Nancy, you'd love to see it close above that on a weekly basis, it being 337.59. That doesn't mean you're out of the woods. It just means you're out of the first dense forest out there and i would take you to a little bit uh, lighter ground which would be 340 21 and above that then you'd be looking to move to 350 350 well we've already got that a to b equals cd at the upside so we got to say that 350 350 level is a price target well I look at the monthly time frame it's bullish prices above its green not center and change line 350 204 is resistance so we're looking at the 350 204 353 50 and above that, the um, not too much higher than uh, that. That's what you're looking at. We take a look at Microsoft and the daily, the weekly, and the monthly, which everything there looks pretty darn good. If we look at that 130 minute time frame chart, why 130? I don't know, because we have 130. How about we change that to a 30 minute chart just to get a little bit more of an alter short term time frame? So we'll do that. Give me a moment here just simply to put the proper template and tools on this. It's a 30 minute chart. So boom, there we go. And now when we take a look at it. What do we have inside of Microsoft? Not much other than right now, price consolidating, Nancy, with inside his profile, the range there, support at 335.98, resistance 338.14, and then above that, 341.63 would be the area that you'd want to watch. So overall, with regard to Microsoft, we like what the charts are looking like as we speak right now. You'd love to see it overcome that resistance point on that weekly time frame chart. Let's go to our next request from Mary Jo. Mary Jo writes in, and she would like to take a look at gold fields. GFI is the ticker symbol. Let's get back to those charts. Her question is, specifically, is this a buy today? And, and Mary Jo, you've got a great radar system out there. Today is going to become bar number eight of a TD9 count pattern out there. Now, 
We know the TD9 count pattern. In fact, if we take a look at the last bottom inside of Goldfields, it was bar number eight that formed that pattern. Now, here, there was a Rhodes-Mintum indicator signal that was triggered on the very next day when it formed bar number nine. That was your Rhodes-Mintum indicator bottom. That was that bull sash candle. And it took off until it did what? formed a TD nine count top. So you can say one thing is for certain with regard to gold fields. It likes those TD nine counts. So the question is today the bottom or is it tomorrow or is it on Thursday? Because when you get a TD nine count, just like the uh, top out there that formed in the bar following bar number nine, that bottom was bar number eight out there. I'd say, Nancy, it's getting very close to a buy. Our preference, I would have said, yeah, it's a buy. If price was still inside that daily profile. But price has closed below that. So we need to see a really great reason on a 30-minute or a short-term time frame chart to tell us that, yes, now is that time. And if we look at a 30-minute chart out here, what do we have? Well, it turns out you did get wave number seven out here. That is letter G. That's one potential pattern. Price is trading inside that swing point, so it's uncertain whether that's going to hold up or not. The volume on that swing point, a 30-minute swing point, that is 472,000 shares. Uh, the last 30-minute uh, bar we were coming down with 182. So you are moving down with lighter volume. But is that enough um, to um, first let it at least test that level? What I would do, though, let's take a look at the GDX. Let's go see what the uh, larger instruments are doing, what the entire sector is doing. So let's switch over to take a look at that. We can come back here and take a look at these charts. But let's go see what the GDX is doing because that will assist you. So in the case of the GDX, it has a confirmed Gartley buy pattern out there. And that formed a couple days ago on October 27th. But that being said, price is back inside its swing point. And that swing point has a uh, volume on October 26th of 37 million shares. We've got done two hours of trading. And the GDX has done 7.5 million shares. So that's a beautiful thing because that says you're pulling back with light volume. But maybe what the GDX wants to do is go test that swing point low. Not necessarily today. Maybe you could do it today, but I'm not saying today. And that low out there is at 28.09. It's not a guarantee that that's what's going to happen, but we didn't really see any clear signals on that 30-minute time frame for uh, gold fields out there. So uh, the GDX, what else do we have? As long as we're here, uh, you've got silver, TD9 count top, pulling back to test support and that oscillator and change line right around the 2432 level out there. Uh, gold, it's got a, a TD9 count top out here as well. A bearish reversal candle would confirm a Rosemont indicator top. We don't need two tops out there. Uh, it just has uh, one as we speak right now. So quickly back to gold fields. For Mary Jo, one more time, where did Stevie put gold fields? I think it might have been there. And nope, that was not it. Gold fields. Give me a second here. Sorry about this. Not there. Oh, maybe it was right here. There we go. So back on gold fields. It's a coin toss, Nance. Um, uh, Nancy, uh, Mary Jo. Uh, Volume-wise, that swing point has volume of 4 million shares, and today you've done 1.2. So 1.2, you're about 3. You're still coming. You're coming down with light volume. Wait, let the day play out here. Why don't we come back and take a look at gold fields tomorrow? And I may not remember to do that, Mary Jo, so if you'd be kind enough to write back to me, whether it be tomorrow on Wednesday or on Thursday. But you are getting closer. It appears you're getting close in the case of gold fields. I don't know what additional information I can provide for you. But thank you so much for that request. We come back for this break. We're going to look at Visa for the one-armed bandit inside the Tiger's Den. That's Jack, 777 out there. We're going to look at Dell for John C. and Coda. Let's take a look at natural gas and Google, as well as G-O-L-D, the ticker symbol, or gold, the, uh, the uh, metal. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. 
The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. Still a mixed bag out in the uh, markets. Uh, let's get back to our requests out here. This next request is a take a look at Beezus for uh, Jack inside the Tiger's Den. So when we look at Beza, what do we know here? Let me see. What do we have? We can see that TD9 count top took price back to its breakout level at 230. 22 actually closed below just a couple of days ago. Turned out that was a false break to the downside. That was testing a swing point. That swing point had volume. That was back on September 27th of uh, 6 million shares. That was tested back on the 27th with 5.5 uh, million shares. Yesterday was rejection of that swing point. It was a rejection of that swing point on lighter volume, 5 million shares. So now uh, what Price is doing, it's trying to get back inside his profile, Jack, and it will accomplish that task today with a close above 233.66. If it can accomplish that, then what it's su suggesting to you and I is Price should make a run for that 238.55. That is the center of its bearish structured daily profile. On this day right here, which was October 25th, Fifth, that was a wide-ranging bar, and price ran right in resistance right at that level, 238.55. So that's going to be the next resistance level for you to deal with on a weekly basis. You're still with inside the profile level, so you're above profile on the monthly. So that's what it looks like Visa wants to do when we take a look at those time frames out there. If I look at the 30-minute uh, time frame chart, though, it says just uh, be careful, be ready for a short-term potential short-term top out here. Now, the cool thing about this pattern is you're, you've got a confirmed TD9 count. It will complete at 12 noon, so another 17 minutes from now. And what price should do out here, Jack, is move back to 232.78 or thereabouts. A test and rejection of that level would be a bullish outcome, but the real bullish outcome would be negating the TD9 count top. And that says that the key level that you want to watch intraday-wise is up at 234.90 level. If Visa can close above that, then what we just looked at on the day Daily time frame should come to fruition. Uh, if price closes below that oscillator and change line, that would tell us about a further retracement with the areas of 231, 230. 
231.41, 231.05, 231.48, 232.12 being the areas to watch and observe as potential support levels out there. So that's what I see when I take a look at Visa. Hope that provided you with the information you were looking for as well. Let's go to our next request. John C. wants to take a look at Dell. D-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-
And there we go. So now we take a look at Google. What do we know? Well, what we know out here is that yesterday this confirmed a buy the D point pattern. Why? Because it was more than a one to one A to B equals C. It looks like probably a one to two. And then he had a bull separating line. So now what do we know? We've got a new daily profile. It is bullish in structure. A second consecutive close above 124.10 ought to take us up to the uh, top of that daily profile, which at 129.94. So on the daily time frame, you've got a buy point, a uh, buy pattern inside of Google. Price is pulled back into its bullish structured zone. That's between 122.16 and 124.10. Not a weekly basis. It looks pretty miserable out there. There's nothing to excite us about the weekly or the monthly, except on the monthly price does remain above the top of its profile. So even though it's kind of lost its momentum, it still looks relatively strong. But on that, that daily time frame, um, as long as price really remains above 122.16, it looks pretty good for a move to 129.94. On a 30-minute basis, when we take a look at uh, Google here, we can see that Google has done what? It's just been trading sideways ever since, but it does have a bottom pattern out there. So Google looks pretty good, at least from the daily standpoint. That weekly and monthly, though, mm, not so much. Steve Rhodes with TFN. We get back to this break. We'll look at, we'll have to do it pretty quick. We'll look at GOLD, UVXY for Nicholas, and the SMH is for Vic. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors you might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Let's be pretty quick with all the requests out here. Gold, G-O-L-D, is uh, trading right now into its bullish structured profile. That's between 1608 and 1629. I don't see anything wrong with this. I don't see a top. I just see a consolidation with inside its daily profiles out there. Uh, Nicholas was asking about the UVXY. He wanted to know how low could the UVXY go out here. And to answer that question out here, first, I would, I would say 1565. I know that you are short. The UVXY, but that's not what I'd be watching. What I would be watching out here, we're going to switch charts, we're going to go over to the black background chart, and uh, we'll say that uh, this uh, call here is courtesy of Garo. And uh, why do I say that? Because Garo likes to use that parabolic SAR. And our parabolic SAR doll dot on you on the VIX itself is at the 19 1899 level we're trading below that as we speak right now so it's taking that out what the VIX should do is go target its 50-day exponential moving average and that 50-day exponential moving average is at 1763 Nicholas I do not know what is inside UVXY go back and take a look at it it likely is not the spot VIX index but instead some futures contracts which we'll have to take a look at I just don't have the time to do that as we speak right now but it does look like uh, the VIX wants to continue to head lower so that trade should work out as well if we take a look at the smh's out here the smh's have a nice td9 count bottom it only gets negated with a close below the low of 136.63 the smh's should target 140.59 if we take a quick peek here at arm this is for Duncan Steve. It still has that Roach momentum indicator bottom. Price trading back into a uh, swing point that has volume of 9.9 .9 million shares. Yesterday was 3.6. Today so far 1.6. So this is really in a, a buy zone out here. We take a look at that. And lastly, we take a look at. Do I have this up? The euro, the yen, the yen will negate its uh, Roach momentum indicator top. In fact, it may in fact negate its weekly TD9 count top on Friday. That suggests that it wants to get weaker metal put strength inside the U.S. dollar index. Folks, have a terrific Tuesday and happy Halloween.